Uh, when it comes to the mRNA platform, let's, let me get nerdy with you for a second here. The mRNA platform does have that quick, very strong efficacy that we saw, but also does wane, as do uh, most uh, protection. We do see that with the antibody titers. But is this something that you are looking at? Is it something that needs to be changed or tweaked about the platform to give longer, maybe more uh, stable protection? Or is this just how the technology works? So I think we should not forget with COVID, which is the virus has changed a lot. And if you remember when the virus was mutating very slowly, like Alpha and Delta in 2021, you saw great performance of a vaccine. We shouldn't forget that with Omicron, the genetic drift was so gigantic in only one step that I think no vaccine with no technology would have been able to hold efficacy of infection strongly because it's linked to antibodies. And antibodies wane with time that is not linked to mRNA, that is linked to our immune system as humans. The piece that is very important to see is that despite the lowering of efficacy against infection, the efficacy against hospitalization and deaths are still very, very high. Mm -hmm. And that's because, as we believe, there is very strong T cell immune memory component in terms of a technology. So I think it's a bit like flu. You know, you need to get an annual flu shot, not because the protein technology is not good. I believe it is really good, but because it's a different virus. And so you need to re-educate your immune system for this different virus, especially if you're at high risk. Again, a 25-year-old who doesn't get an annual flu shot, are they going to die? If they have no comorbidity, highly unlikely. But a 60-year-old person that has a commodity factor needs their booster because their, their antibody is a very important component of their protection.